Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So the first round has concluded of the NFL draft and um, my beloved Dallas Cowboys selected Leighton Vander Esk, uh, inside linebacker from Boise State at pick 19 and love the pick guys. Um, I didn't get a chance to, to put out any video of some of the players I was looking at and, and wanted, but um, personally, that is who I wanted to draft. I did not want to trade up. Now, if Derwin James had fallen to 19, I would have been cool with that. If Vita Vey had fell to 19, I would have been cool with that. Uh, but I loved Leighton Vander Esk. And, and for those of you, and I'm seeing a lot of Cowboys fans on social media and some of, the, some of you folks who are in Dallas tonight um, that were there at the draft celebrating and representing that are frustrated because we did not draft a wide receiver, frustrated because we didn't take DJ Moore or Calvin Ridley or something uh, flashier, per se, like trading up for a Derwin James. And quite frankly, you guys weren't in the know. You guys haven't been following the right resources. Um, I will be at the draft tomorrow um, for the second and third round for, for day two. So, you know, we'll be doing some, some content there. But if you, if, when I say you're not in the know, it's been very clear from 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 all the appropriate people that follow this team um, that the Cowboys have been favoring Vita Vey, Leigh Vander Esk, and if those guys were off the board, then somebody like a DJ Moore would have been in the mix. Uh, and that was not a, that was assuming that Derwin James was going to be off the board by the time they were picking. So their their projections were very accurate. Number one. So Leighton Vander Esk uh, uh, being picked at 19 is not a surprise at all. Number one. Number two, the linebacker was an enormous need. And the best player available at 19, in my opinion, happened to be a linebacker. So to me, it was a no-brainer. Because at least in the third thing, I didn't think of the wide receivers there there was no one worthy of being the 19th pick, in my opinion. I did not look at DJ Moore as somebody who, I, if, if we were going to pick DJ Moore, I would have liked to move back and get a couple more picks. Same thing with Calvin Ridley. My issue with Calvin Ridley was, you know, is 180, 190 pounds, has trouble getting off coverage. And, 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 and DJ Moore being a smaller guy as well, um, I only really saw him catch bubble screens and run go routes at Maryland. And if you're drafting a wide receiver at 19, number one, he's going to have to be uh, a contributor as a, either first or second wide receiver right off the bat, the way this team is currently constructed. And number two, you're looking at the wide receivers over the last few years, whether it's Josh Dotson, Mike Williams, Corey Davis, all these guys last year. It takes time for these wide receivers to come along. You look at a John Ross that got drafted last year. Wide receivers have struggled tremendously that have been picked early. And I think I covered that in a previous video. So I'm happy that they did not just jump up there and pick out of need. Now, if you look at this linebacker draft, this was a very special, this is going to be a very special linebacker draft. And I'm glad we were able to get one of them. Every year, there's a position group that's just loaded. This year, linebacker was one of those position groups. I think last year, you could have made the argument about corner um, and a couple other spots. A couple years ago was offensive linemen and defensive linemen. This year, uh, these linebackers are phenomenal. And you're getting a guy in Lane Vander S who is six foot four, 260, damn near 40 inch vertical, 4'6 guy, amazing cover skills and instincts. You guys look at the tape. Yes, weaknesses, he's only played one season. And, and that is that is going to be a concern from an experience standpoint, what he's seen. You know, people made this whole thing up about his neck and, the, the you know, him playing eight-man football in high school, all that. Forget all that. When you saw him play last year uh, with the, the physicality show, he looked like he'd been playing football for 20 years. Uh, some of the reads and, and, and ball skills that he showed, quite frankly. One of the uh, analysts on here mentioned that he, he, he kind of plays like a safety in the middle of the field a little bit. And at his size and with his athletic ability, um, he's going to fit in very nicely with Sean Lee and Jalen Smith. It takes a lot of pressure off of Jalen Smith. We can blitz Jalen Smith more. Uh, Rod Marinelli, now some pressure is going to be on you to be more creative with this group because you've got some, some, some real rangy talent um, in the middle of your defense. I'm very, very excited about this. 
when you look at the last few years, Tony Romo's last real game when we were getting picked off by Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis and all those guys, linebackers is still very, very important in this league. And you saw how much our defense dropped off when Sean Lee was not present. Now we don't, you know, knowing we have two injury-prone people there, um, that is something that's going to be shored up in conjunction with this young secondary. And moving forward, going into day two and day three, I'd like to see us take an approach that we did last year where we picked three corners. Let's go out there and pick two wide receivers. Just because I said the first round we shouldn't just jump after a wide receiver, I do believe there's a ton of wide wide receivers in the mid-tier who there's not that much separation from the top tier guys like a Ridley. You know, even a Cortland Sutton may be around at 50 if we don't trade it for Earl. Coming to get you, buddy. But if we don't make that move, somebody like a Cortland Sutton could be available. Um, even a Michael Gallup, who I love out of Colorado State. To me, I don't see much of a diff. Like, you can't tell me that Calvin Ridley is that much better than the, the Colorado State right, right receiver, Michael Gallup. Again, you guys need to familiarize yourself with some of these players. Um, and, and the Cowboys fans I'm seeing complaining, oh, we didn't get Ridley, blah, blah, blah. Look, he ended up in a great situation in Atlanta. And he's going to look good in Atlanta because he's playing next to Julio. And that's where he belongs. He's, he's going to be a number two guy. Um, so I, I love what we did. Um, to me, it was a football-savvy pick. Those of you, again, who are in the know and have been following the Cowboys draft process, the visits, um, uh, you know, again, the guys that they've, they've continuously talked about that they like in some of the leaks, Leighton Van Der Esch was at the top of the list, you know, consensus amongst um, everybody that follows this team and somebody that I've been very, very excited about. If you're if you're low on him, get the Bobby Carpenter thing out of your head. He, just because he's a tall white guy, and, you know that's that's really what what what, it, what it's coming down to. Get that out of your head. He plays nothing like him. Bobby was more of an outside guy anyway. Um, I'm really really excited about this pick, guys. And um, this is the first time in a long time that they've like legit done what I've wanted them to do. Um, that I was hoping for and and and. Um, in the second round, I want to see them go after these mid-tier guys, whether it's a Michael Gallup or Deion Kane. Um, you know, go ahead and take a chance on a couple wide receivers in the mid-tier of the draft. Um, maybe get another defensive tackle, Trenton Thompson out there from Georgia. Um, again, there's there's a lot of holes we still need to address. I'd like to even see them take another quarterback uh, later in the draft as well uh, to improve your quarterback room. So we'll see. This is this is very exciting times. I'm very pleased tonight as a Cowboys fan. That may not be popular to say, um, but if not, you need to familiarize yourself with what's going on out here. Point blank. Anyway, go Cowboys. I will see some of you guys tomorrow night at the draft. Super excited to be there. It's going to be, from what I've seen so far, an unbelievable fan experience. And um, can't wait to uh, you know chat up with all you guys. Thank you.